Hi, this is Derek Glenn. Today we're looking at a specific clinical problem. This is a gentleman who's had a PET CT for staging purposes. The PET CT has revealed a low grade PET avid lymph node adjacent to the esophagus in the posterior mediastinum. So, just zooming in on the CAT scan images here off the PACs, uh, these were done at another hospital, just showing you the lymph node there. So, there's the aorta, you can see just going up and down. So, we have the azagous vein, the aorta, the esophagus and a little paraesophageal lymph node there, just outlining that with the mouse. So that's the target. Now we could access a lymph node like that with a transesophageal approach using EUS, endoscopic ultrasound. Problem with that is we would get a fine needle only rather than a histologic sample. Uh, so we elected to do this with fluoro CT guidance. I'm going to use an 18 gauge 15 centimeter Chiba and a 20 gauge 20 centimeter Temno. This is the patient prone in fluoro CT. Just pause the playback there. That's the 18 gauge 15 centimeter Chiba needle. And you can see that I've just injected a bit of fluid, in this case lignocaine 1%, to displace the pleura away from the needle. So we can get an absolutely pneumothorax free procedure in this situation by using a bit of fluid injected down the uh, first needle, down the coaxial needle, so that it displaces the pleura away from the needle tip. The next problem we have, if I just release the pause there, you can see that the needle tip there is just pointing at the posterior surface of the aorta. The aorta is quite close to the uh, thoracic vertebral body. So what I'm going to do now is inject a bit more lignocaine 1% to displace the aorta away. So there we go. On the subsequent view there, you can see the uh, aorta pushes away from the thoracic vertebral body. So I'm creating a safe window between the needle tip and the uh, thoracic vertebral body by injecting lignocaine 1% and I'm watching real time with fluoro as I do that. This whole process takes only a, a few seconds. So I'm, so I'm watching real time with fluoro as the aorta is displaced and that allows me to get that needle behind the aorta. You can see now that the aorta is a couple of millimeters away from the vertebral body. That's enough for me to get the needle behind. What you're seeing now is a, a few passes with the 20 gauge core. So uh, these are just static shots from the packs. This isn't real-time fluoro, so this is a bit different to our other videos. So what you're seeing now is the 18 gauge 15 centimeter Chiba placed between the aorta and the vertebral body. That needle doesn't move anymore. Then inside that needle, we're running a 20 centimeter 20 gauge core biopsy needle, and I'm watching real time as that needle tip goes through the target lymph node. So you can see the azagous vein, the esophagus, and the aorta. And you can see there, if I just pause that again, you can see that's the stilette extended through the target lymph node with the azagous vein a couple of millimeters off to patients, right? The aorta just between the, just adjacent to the tip of the coaxial needle itself and several passes. We did about four passes through this lymph node. These are just up and down through some images we obtained on the packs. So several passes with the uh, stilette through that lymph node to obtain histologic specimens, all of it done under real-time control. So the advantage of this technique is that you can watch real-time as you move your needle up towards the pleural surface and push the pleural surface away from the needle tip using lignocaine. You can push the aorta away from the vertebral body using lignocaine to create a little space. The aorta relaxes back adjacent to the vertebral column in a few seconds, but that doesn't matter. You've then by that stage got your needle in position. And once you've got your needle in position up against the lymph node, you can do multiple passes with a 20 gauge core biopsy needle and obtain specimen. In this particular case, we were able to demonstrate that that was metastatic adenocarcinoma in that lymph node, which made a big difference uh, to the patient's clinical management, because obviously that meant that he had disseminated disease at that point and there was no point in contemplating the extensive hepatic resection that had been planned for him. So although ultimately that's bad news, it's much better to get that bad news before a big operation than afterwards.